Water and energy are two resources which are quite inseparable on Earth. The water cycle, driven by energy, solar energy, has been essential for life. Ocean currents, such as the Gulf Stream, also contribute to the energy and thermal balance on the planet. Man has used this combination of water and energy forever, storing rainfall behind uh, dams, for instance, to store water and release water for irrigation purposes and also produce electrical power. Tidal power plants use the tides to fill pools when the tide is high and when the tide is low, the water drives mills and more recently turbines to produce electrical power. Energy produced by windmills, you remember the uh, cowboy movies with the windmill and the water trough for cattle, or more recently photovoltaic uh, power plant, has used this system to uh, pump underground water and store it in uh, water troughs or small water towers. Here we have a smart combination of between water and energy to produce uh, a valuable resource, water, with the help of solar energy. And at the same time, energy is stored, for instance, uh, in the form of water being held in tanks. Similarly, nowadays, when our nuclear power plants produce more electrical power than is needed on the grid, this is especially at night, the surplus water, uh, the surplus electricity is used to pump water between two water basins in the mountains, and the reserve will then uh, drive a turbine in order to provide electrical power during peak consumption hours. On the industrial level, we have what used to be done on an amateur level during our cowboy movies. The system is the same, always the combination between water and energy. In a more sophisticated fashion, there are systems that use hydrogen as a clean green fuel, for instance, fuel cells, using the energy connected uh, with the uh, bond between uh, oxygen and uh, hydrogen in the water molecule. And uh, in this case, all kinds of energies can be put to use to dissociate the water molecule. This can be achieved with electrolysis using energy uh, from uh, renewable sources, intermittent renewable sources uh, like windmills, or also uh, high temperature systems, for instance, the Odeo solar furnace, and with the help of some catalyzers. In this case, solar energy and water are used to produce a clean energy carrier, hydrogen, to uh, fuel, fuel cells or to drive the engine of uh, hydrogen uh, vehicles. Thermal power plants produce electricity, but not in a very favorable way. In this case, uh, the production is full of impact. Whether it uses fossil fuels, uh, for instance, coal, uh, or uh, nuclear systems, or even uh, central concentration thermodynamic power plants, a large quantity of water is used for cooling purposes. In the uh, steam turbining cycle, for the yield to be uh, good enough, we need a cool spot to condensate vapor, steam. And you remember, you may have seen uh, in the landscape the big uh, cooling towers uh, near nuclear plants. In France, 60% of the water used is used to cool down the power plants and 30% approximately in Europe. This is a huge percentage. Fortunately, the largest part of the water is recycled, but this uh, contributes to river warming and it does have an impact on ecosystems. Because uh, we need more and more water and there is water so shortage due to global warming and uh, increasing temperatures, we uh, Populations need irrigation uh, water or water to uh, drink, and drinking water is a, an international challenge nowadays. We're not just talking about dry countries, arid countries. This uh, water shortage uh, happens in Europe as well. In 2008, in Barcelona, very near us, the town had to invest in a large desalination uh, plant, the biggest in Europe, to meet the local the need of the local population during the summer of 2008. In France, uh, water stress is closing in on the Mediterranean uh, towns, and we will need to face the problem very soon. In France, we have water. Everybody knows we have 
big aquifers and underground reserves. Unfortunately, most of the time, the water is not drinkable because it uh, contains biorecalcitrants such as uh, fungicides and pesticides, carcinogenic molecules, with a level three times uh, higher than the, uh, lo the European uh, threshold. We need to address these problems and get ready to address these problems in the near future. We have uh, the beginning of solutions, for instance, uh, pollution of uh, underground water. There are processes being developed based on uh, solar catalyzing systems in use in order to use the uh, most energetic photons in the uh, spectrum the UV photons that photo excite catalyzers, catalyzer, TiO2 is a natural catalyzer that releases free radicals that act like chainsaws on molecules in order to remove the carcinogenic molecules from the water. And solar energy here comes to the rescue of water. Regarding water desalination, there are solutions being contemplated. Countries like Kuwait, large uh, oil producers, already have enough desalination plants to drink 90% of water coming from desalination plants, except that they use a lot of uh, oil to drive the plants. On the world level, sweet water produced from uh, desalination plants is the equivalent of the uh, flow of our Paris River at the Seine. Just to give you an idea, seawater desalination uses uh, a lot of uh, energy and has environmental impact because anti-foam agents or anti-corrosion agents are released in the sea. The stake for tomorrow will be to find systems to desaline the water with no waste and uh, with the use of uh, renewable energies in order to drive the plants. In summary, water and energy are two sisters, inseparable sisters. They need each other almost systematically, but they can also hurt each other. In the near future, we need to manage them in a smart way.